Praise the Lord, everybody. We're live. I trust we are seeing us there. The Lord is good and his mercy endures forever. I want to speak about, uh, I've had quite a time setting this uh, studio stuff up, but here we are. Uh, let me tell you about a few books I have uh, that go going to reprint. The Focus Factor, powerful. We were talking about that today with one of my great uh, staff and team members and administrator, brilliant person. Prophetic Keys to Successful Living is available now in print. You can get this. Uh, going to reprint is 66 Prophecies for Kenya. Reprint Laws of Success, The Laws of Success, coming out in a few days. This is going to take a half a minute, but we're going to redo this again. Supernatural Operations of Spiritual Conquest to the Office of the Prophet. It's a long title, but... Uh, there it is, Success Strategies, another book on success, beautiful. And the benefits of excellence. When you walk in excellence, hey, great things begin to happen, you know. And we're going to begin to see God in his, in, in his fullness, the fullness of his glory that are just, you know, beyond the dimensions we've seen before. Because God is elevating his own elect. I'll show you a picture. At 12, 12 it is now. I like the number. That is apostolic. And it's 72 degrees. So two, 7 plus 2 plus 12 plus 12. You got some beautiful numbers there. I don't know if you know this man. Apostle Dunstan Maboya. I was just on the phone with him. He just called me. Uh, sent me a message and I just tapped, you know, let's talk and uh, a few minutes ago and I asked him to speak a blessing and then I began to prophesy across what God's going to begin to do in the nations of Africa and he said he's coming to see me, he's coming back to uh, the city here and we're going to get together real soon. We're also planning some very big events for breakthroughs in Tanzania. I'm prophesying over Tanzania that even into the government arena, Christianity needs to take effect. Bold warriors need to rise up and begin to take by force. So the Lord wants to break his people out of every individual stronghold that's, you know, that's uh, uh, oppressed, anything that's oppressed you, that's tried to attack me, anything at all that's in our way. This is the day and the hour when God's going to begin to break those things. You know? And we're going to begin to see God's favor like we've never seen. I saw a principle here from Philippians 2.4. Every man ought not just to look on his own things, but every man needs to also look on the things of others. But I have to say this before that. Before you can help anybody else, you certainly have to be helped yourself. You know, you need resources to work in life. You need uh, uh, abundance of brilliance, of revelation, of anointing, of power, of all kinds of <coughs> forceful Things that propel you, propulsions, you know, of power and fire to lead you into the, the places you need to get to. 1 Corinthians 12, verse 1, says, Paul said, I don't want you to be ignorant concerning the things of the Spirit. And uh, God is telling me that it's, it's, not a, it's not like a new truth, you know. But the Lord is saying that he's going to begin to unlock, delist and unlist, expose and then remove and completely destroy and annihilate things that have kept his good people stuck in any way. I want you to hear the word of the Lord tonight. If you're watching this by day in a replay or whenever it is, fine. 
whatever time of day you're watching this, it's always uh, appropriate and accurate as the word of the Lord, as the Lord is speaking. God is, dis- help, is helping work with us and by his blessed, powerful anointing, destroying strongholds. Op- what is a stronghold? An operation is something that's strong, that's holding you. You know, just look at the word, duh, stronghold. What does it mean? It means just that. It's got a hold on you. And uh, you're not progressing enough. So, uh, you know, and what you need to be getting done in your world, and what is what you need to do. You need to look at everything. You need to look at uh, your surroundings, the people, the situations, assess things, assess systems, assess assess uh, 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 operations in your daily life. What are you doing? You know, what do you want to get done? Com- and compare yourself to the heavenly vision and say, now, what's happening in the realm of production in this thing that I need to be doing for the Lord Jesus Christ and getting done that's not getting done yet? This is really also very much an order of a teaching of, on the laws of success, the ways of success, as I'm anointed, and that's a major high, super highway of a lane, lanes that I drive on, that I run on, because God's given me this message. Um, even on my website today, my web developer is here with me full time, and I, I mean, not here now, now it's the middle of the night. Uh, staff's gone home a few hours back, but the Lord is. Uh, um, having, you know, the website to be updated. And I said something about a vision statement, and I just wrote this. Bringing multitudes into success, semicolon, so in order to advance the kingdom of God around the world. Now, what does that mean? There's kingdom financiers. There's kingdom resources. There's kingdom strategists. There's people that are going to succeed in the realm of business and enterprises and all that. For what? so that we could win souls by the millions around the world and build operations and organizations and what it is God has ordained for us to build and to help people. And if, you, if you're not, I want to say it again. Philippians 2.4 said, man should, a person shouldn't just look up after their own things, but also after the things of others. But how can you do that? if you're not helped yourself. Now, there's a scripture in Song of Solomon that I really love because it unveils some, a, a real deep myst, mystery and a principle of something that needs to be dealt with. This one, the, the beautiful woman there, she said, I've kept the garden of others in Song of Solomon chapter one. I can't remember the exact verse right now. You can find it and put it on the screen. I've kept the garden of others, the vineyards of others, but my own vineyard I've not kept. In other words, I've worked for everything else and looked after everybody else, but I didn't look after myself. Therefore, there's something really big that's missing. Compare her to the right, compare that one, that, that one beautiful, uh, dark, lovely woman, whoever, whoever she was there, the one working, was missing building her own empire because she was building something for another entity, but it didn't really include enough about her. Compare her now to the writer of that very verse, Solomon the king. What was he doing? He was working on his empire. He built it. He wasn't out building another's. Now, many people called, I know one, I have, I have some friends. I have one friend. He doesn't even have his own business card or his own corporation. Why? Because he's the second man to a great apostle. And he'll serve him for life. He's been there for you know, two and a half decades already. And his, his glory in his life, his assignment is to serve that man of God and to build the organization. So God has people in the team that it's literally their job and their assignment from heaven to work in that thing as if it's their own. And really, amazingly enough, it is their own. So if your name is Jim, jo- Jim uh, Tom Jones, and you say, well, I have to make Tom Jones Ministries International, or Tom Jones, you know, 
luxurious enterprise international. I'm, when no one, Tom Jones maybe is called to assist uh, another man, help him build what's his, you know. Also, they're in it together. Guess what? The second man gets the same reward like the first man. Why? Because the first man can't do everything by himself. So God is not crazy. He's ordained people to work in organizations, but, I'm, but you're talking about sometimes in life when you... And I've done this. You know, this, this, this preaches. This preaches so well. It's so appropriate and so accurate because I, I've also done this quite a lot. Helped so many people, you know, at the expense of uh, sometimes our own thing. And now the Lord is saying, you know, build... Build what I've told you to build, son. Build what I want you to build. God. So, beloved, I wish above all things, John said, that you prosper and be in good health even as your soul prospers. Huh? And Amos 3.7, that's 3 John 2. Amos 3.7 said, Surely the Lord God will do nothing except he first reveal the secret to his servant, the prophet. And then the prophet speaks it out. And it says, the, the Lord has spoken. Who then can but prophesy? So you got to look at yourself and say, hey, you know what? What am I doing? When you... Here's what I want to tell you as a promise prophetically tonight. And this is a, a, one of the great underlying themes of this whole message. When you decide to give your all to go for, go for it, so to speak, and what God's ordained you to do, he'll help you in every possible way you can imagine, including clearing the clutter in your life and the time wasters and the blessing blockers and the, all of that. And then the things that were deeply sent from the kingdom of darkness to try to hurt you to get you messed up from within inside yourself that you can't see the world correctly. And I've wanted to do this for some days, but I'm going to start to name some of them. Bitterness, cynicism, negativity, holding grudges, feeling bad, having a bad outlook about a communities of people because you've had bad experience in those communities. It's like these, these shades will put on you this, this, this dim, dimmer switch has been put on the light in your head and your heart because you've had bad experiences, you know? And you, you look at people, you know, right away from a... I tell, I tell people on the phone, I said, somebody promised me something. And then I said, but how can I even believe certain people, you know? I just pray that they're going to do it. This time, you know, and they don't turn out to be like... A, You know, some other people that promise. And, you know, we found people that are liars. And what happens is when you get in the midst of all kinds of things that people like that, it damages you. It damages your outlook on things. It hurts your moving ahead. It causes you to um, get stuck along the way, and God will work to destroy everything that's in your way. That's a blessing blocker or a progress blocker has to be knocked out of the way. Oh, yes. Korababa shele. Ma bon jashal andele sai touche. Sala aeti zanga do zagala zadere. Thy hands have made me and fashioned me to give me and give me, give me understanding, Lord, that I may learn what I need to know. You know, everything about God. Prophetically, e even the prophetic grace is what? It's to unveil, uncover, hear something powerful and creative and productive and push it forth 
through speaking it out or declaring it or writing it or sending it. And, you know, things begin to happen. Let me throw this prophecy in here. Nairobi, Kenya will be the New York City of Africa. Thus saith the Lord. Nairobi, Kenya will become the New York City of Africa. New York City is a great city. But Africa is going to have great cities. And Nairobi, Kenya is the one. And I prophesy that Nairobi, Nairobi, Kenya is becoming the New York of Africa. It really is. It's happening. I prophesy. I need to make a headline out of this. Nairobi, Kenya is being elevated. Did I not say this back in 2002? That Nairobi will become a world-class cosmopolitan city and the destination of millions of people. That hasn't happened yet. It's becoming, but the destination of millions all kinds of traffic coming through here. In fact, I'm seeing even that uh, huge organization might be relocating to have their main headquarters of the world here. This is almost frightening because you, you, you think, oh my God, it's going to become inconvenient. The traffic is going to be too much. The building that's going on here is too much. The development is too much. But look at New York, the concrete jungle. There's hardly any places where you see trees and open land any, anymore. You know, maybe a uh, hundred years ago there was, but now that's all gone. It's become, you know, it's become a, <laughs> a place of buildings. It looks like that's also happening in Nairobi. Some of that's not good. It's not good to kill all the land. And Seems like everywhere there's an open plot, they're trying to put up a building here, these entities of other people. It's unbelievable. But you know what? The way that these people develop things, God wants to also develop you in your life. What's in your way? I declare that victoriously we're going to have the victory. Victoriously, victorious victory. Say the word twice, double portion, double trouble on the kingdom of darkness. The victory, victorious, power, twice over. There's a realm of glory that's coming up and out from the church. The Lord spoke to me, and I prophesied this some time back. There's like an elite society rising up from within the church. There's going to be an elite circle from within the church, a remnant within the remnant that's going to do great things. Now, I'm reminded of Ecclesiastes 2.26, which says, so powerfully that the, the, well, the job of the sinner is to go and gather and collect things to then give those over to the one who's good before God. Well, that's me. And then Proverbs 13, 22, the same writer was Solomon. He said the blessing, uh, uh, you know, the, the, wealth of, the wealth of the wicked is laid up for the righteous. And then Proverbs 10, 22, the same writer against Solomon, said the blessing of the Lord makes me rich and has no sorrow. And his daddy David wrote, in Psalm 35, 27, that God takes pleasure in the prosperity of his servant. They that favor my righteous cause. They'll be great. Daniel eleven thirty two. they'll be great and do, they'll be strong and great and do great exploits. And we're going to see it now. In these days, like never before, the victorious realm of power and authority and blessing, honor, glory and dominion and blessing, honor, and glory, strength, power, might, riches, and wealth, healing and health, soul prosperity, according to 3 John 2, according to Revelation 5, 12, power and riches, power and, power and riches, and then wisdom and blessing, glory and honor, and strength in between there. Strength is for the physical man. You know, let's claim that thing about what uh, said, was said of Moses, his eyes weren't dim. He was strong. Caleb said, I'm strong at 85 like I was like I, like I was when I was 40. Amen. You know, and with long life, Psalm 91, 16, the, the Lord said, I'll satisfy you and show you my salvation because your mind is stayed on me. See, this is the thing. Here's another matching verse to that. It's Romans 8, 28, and all these verses are going on the screen. 
Romans 8.28 said, All things work together for good, not even say bad, for good for those who love me and are called according to my purpose. The blessing of the Lord makes me rich and has no sorrow. Then the gifts of favor. Who can find a virtuous woman? Proverbs 31, 10 to 31. You find her, you're, you're blessed. And then, you know, the Bible says when you find a wife, not a knife, not strife, but you want to have a good life, you need to find a good wife. And then you obtain special favor from the Lord. And that's uh, Proverbs 18, 22. Also, the same writer, Solomon, wrote that. Now you go back all the way to Genesis. The writer was, I guess, Moses. Genesis, the, the Pentateuch, who penned the Pentateuch, the five books. You know, Genesis, uh, Anamasha, Exodus, uh, uh, yeah, Numbers, Deuteronomy, hello. And what's the other one in there? Leviticus. So, Genesis 2, 18. I think it was. Not good for man to be alone. God said, I'll make, help me. And could, he said he, he made the woman, put her with the man, and called their name Adam and blessed them. So they were one together, but it's Adam who named her Eve, the woman of my delight. Let me tell you something. Any beautiful woman you ever see in the earth came from Eve. Any handsome man you see in life came from Adam. Now, anything else is a degradation along the way of corruption and all that, you know. So not everything, you know. And every, but every, you know the, the, the old song, everything is beautiful in its own way. And then God says he makes everything beautiful in its time. There's a time for everything, you know, in Ecclesiastes 3. And everything is made beautiful. Everything is beautiful. Look at the beautiful creation. Every person that has the, the spirit of the Lord in them is a beautiful person. You know, in these days, and or maybe in all days, people make a big thing about different kind of looks and different kinds of ways about people. Yeah, that's good. That's cool. Amen. You know, it's good to enjoy the beauty and want it and all that and desire it and, and admire it. But everything that's been touched by God has beauty in it. So, I drum roll. I bring this to... I bring me myself forward to say this now. God wants everything made back into the way that he did everything to make it beautiful and powerful and divinely inspired and touched. God wants it that way. He wants it that way. And you and me get the privilege and the responsibility and the hard, the hard job that can seem hard sometimes of beautifying our world. Make a standard in your life. I'm the how-to prophet. I'll tell you how to. I won't just tell you what's good. I'll tell you. I won't tell you what's good. I'll tell you how to get it. What's good, how to get what's good. Start from this moment right now. Begin to assess everything around you by the eyes of the spirit by an objective viewpoint, say, look at things and say, what is this producing? What is my opportunity cost? Opportunity cost is the thing in economics that says, I'm doing things this way, I get this much. But I could have been doing things in a higher order and getting much more, and I'm getting that much. So opportunity cost is to that much minus to this, what I'm doing now. You know? <laughs> trying to go the same. What I'm doing now, whatever level it is, and then the higher realm, what I can be doing on a higher level, this subtracted by this, there's a number down there, which is your opportunity cost. Cost, cost is a funny word. It really means your loss. Your opportunity loss was your opportunity cost. Your opportunity cost was your opportunity loss. Your opportunity lost and your opportunity loss, L-O-S-S, and L-O-S-T. So we need to get out of that. So I wanted to call this like destroying the mysteries of evil that come against the human life. One of them is pain and sorrow and adversity and attack to make you bitter. 
Let me tell you the answer for bitterness. God wants to make you better, not bitter. He wants to make everything beautiful in your life that you don't carry any negativity. The next one is negativity. A negative outlook on things. You're, you, 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 you're looking at things in a negative light. Negative. A negative uh, uh, posture, you know, a negative viewpoint. And then a, a cynical viewpoint. Cynicism. Pessimistic, you know. So I don't believe anybody good. And then uh, negativity, like with a, with a prejudice that you see that you hold grudges against certain people. You got to break all that. And then here's the key to it all is the, is, the, is the gift of forgiveness. Forgiveness is a gift that God gives us to release ourselves from the evildoer. If you forgive them, you don't absolve them from their guilt. They're still going to pay for what they did. However, you release yourself from all that they did to you. Whatever they stole, however they lied, however they cheated, however they conned you, however they conned you, however they messed you up, however much they belittled you or attacked you or did horrible things to you, abusive and terrible and disrespectful and dishonoring and dishonest and all of that garbage that evil doers do. You, do you think they go free? And some people don't want to forgive because they think, if I forgive, it means that they're not going to pay for it. Well, no, it's two separate orders. Let me just tell you. Let me teach you something here. For forgiveness. <laughs> this technology. Forgiveness. And the conviction of guilt in another that does evil are two different things. Now, Jesus said forgive so that your Father in heaven will also forgive you because, you know, who, who's perfect anyway? We all need to be forgiven of something. Now, if you don't forgive, it's like you tie yourself to them and really you damage yourself. Somebody said, it's like drinking poison and expecting the other person to die. And I heard somebody say something It sounds almost downright rude, telling a story about while you're lamenting over what somebody did to you, I'm talking to a lot of people here. While you're lamenting and being damaged and living in a damaged state, living in a damaged state because of what evildoers have done to you or an evildoer has done to you, they're out there carrying on uh, doing things to their next victim until God cuts them down, which I believe he will. And he's in the process of doing but the CEO, so it's a different system. The system of God's judgment is different from the system of you getting free of everything evil that's ever happened to you. You see the stories on, on, the, on, on, the, on, the, on the documentaries and the forensic files and the 48 hours and the shows that show how you know, some fool killed, murdered people in the family and the whole family's torn apart. They come into the courtroom. They have to go through the whole trial of this devil that's sitting there. He can get convicted to death, uh, sentenced to death or life imprisonment or whatever. It's not going to give you back what was lost, and you can't undo what was done. What's the gift of God? I know this is painful. What's the gift of God to the people that have been offended and afflicted? Forgiveness. To say, Lord, you've forgiven me of a lot. I'm not a perfect human either. I certainly haven't done evil crim crimes like these evil people have. But this thing came close to home, and we, we, couldn't, we couldn't divert it. It happened, but now what? Am I going to let my life be destroyed? I'm, I'm talking to a lot of people here. Am I going to let my life be damaged or hindered because of evildoers? God forbid. The answer is N-O. And to the O, no. I will not suffer because of evildoers. So the Holy Spirit ha has, ha has a way of coming to set us free. You know? And, that, and, that's, and that's how it has to be. Can you say a big amen? The Lord is good and his mercy endures forever.
I've said it so many times in this message so far, it's not something I say a lot, but I probably need to say it all the time. It just feels good in the spirit right now. For the Lord is good and his mercy endures forever. God is good all the time and all the time God is good. For the Lord is good. That's, you know, that's a, say, a statement that people made to say, but the, uh, the scripture says, the scripture says, for the Lord is good and his mercy endures forever. And they cried that out over and over, and the glory filled the house. Let me tell you something about Revelation 5.12. Of, of 9 to, to 14, maybe. Revelation 5. Go from the 9th to the 10th verse to about the 13th, 14th verse. Look at that whole discourse there. It said, He was the Lamb slain before the foundation of the world to receive, to receive. What, I have to ask this question. Just think, just think about this for a minute. Be a thinking person. Why does Jesus as God need those things? Power, riches, wisdom, strength, glory, honor, and blessing. What does he need them for? He has them all and more. What he took them back for was he took them back from the devil who stole them from Adam by the, the, by the, the transfer of uh, uh, disobedience that caused the consequence of you know, losing the, the garden. Eh? And uh, losing the garden, and then God, Jesus had to come take it back. What else did he take back? What else did he take back? The kingdoms of this world. What else did he take back? The glory of things, of, of, of the life that was in the garden, of eternal power and glory, back from the devil and the, and the kingdom of darkness. So I asked this question according, you know, looking at Revelation 5.12. Why did Jesus need those as God? In heaven he has everything. He has more than that. He has more than power. He has more than riches. He has more than wisdom. He has more than strength. He has more than glory, honor, or blessing. He, he's, the, he's the manufacturer of those things. Let me tell you something about God, about Jesus himself who is God the deity of Christ, the, 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 de of, the, the deity, the God Almighty in the flesh, Jesus Christ, the King of kings and the Lord of lords, the Son of the living God. Let me tell you about him. He doesn't just have existence. He is existence. He doesn't just have life. He is life. He doesn't just know truth or give truth. He is truth. He doesn't just point the way. He is the way. <laughs> and the life and eternal life. And one of his names is, I am the resurrection and the life, the bread of life, the great shepherd, the bishop and overseer of our souls, the Alpha and the Omega, the fairest of 10,000, the rose of Sharon, the lily of the valley, the bright and the morning star, the, the prince of peace, the everlasting father, the mighty God. The faithful, the faithful, the amen and the true, come on, who's coming back, riding, riding back here to take us back again. What does he have need of as God? So what is Revelation 5.12? What does it have to do just with him alone? Uh, little or nothing or not enough. It has everything to do with him giving those things to us, to me. Remember the first chapter of the first book of the Bible? Genesis 1.26 so powerfully said, I made you my own image after my own likeness, and I want you to have dominion over everything on the earth. So who's it for? This God who is life, who is power, who is the creator, does he need to receive anything to aggrandize himself or to have anything for himself? No. N to the O. No. Turn it around, on. N-O, put it on. It's on who? It's on me. It's on you. So this, this euphoric, brilliant, power-filled life where we have everything good at our disposal is the thing that God's ordained for us to have. Can you say a huge amen to that? That's what he wants. That's what he has. That's what we need. Think about it. 
think about that. So, Father, I take these words that you've spoken in my spirit the last many days about this thing about the mystery of negativity, the, 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 the horrific evil. It, it's even like mysterious. It's like, how did this thing get to me? How did it get to you? How did it get to anybody? Cynicism, holding grudges. Let me tell you something. A gr- I, I felt like a while ago, before, I was walking somewhere in the, in, the, in, the, in the studio here, in the other rooms, and I was just heard this thought as I was walking in the hallway before I came and sat down here to do this blessed broadcast. I saw, I saw, saw this in the spirit and I heard this statement. Tell me, he, the Lord said grudges are, are kept by the weak soul, by the damaged soul, by the afflicted soul. When you're walking in power, you can't hold the grudge and I'll tell you why. Because you're so much bigger than the offender. You can't, you can't be the offended. Breaking the strongholds, breaking, destroying evil strongholds, even mysterious ones, of, of even someone thinking that they can have any validity in holding a grudge against somebody else. You see someone, it happened to me. I, I'll just be transparent. It happened to me. I saw certain people and I looked at them and I was like, oh, God, the things they've done, how they are, the way they are, blah, 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 blah. And then I caught myself and then that was the last time that, that, that ever happened because I, I dealt with it in the spirit. And I felt the Lord come, you know. Say something, as God's raising you up, there's this thing, I was talking about this Sunday morning. I'm continuing a bit in this flow here of this same series of messages, if you can see this if you can perceive that. Uh, entitled Victorious Spiritual Warfare, now dis- destroying evil strongholds. And I'm going on with a few others. Grudges and negativity and bitterness and even it could borderline go to hatred and resentment. You know, all that nasty stuff that tries to get in you. It needs to go in Jesus' name and I break it. I break it off of you. I break it out. Don't let it kill you. Don't hold on forgiveness and say this even to the worst offender. I know it's hard. I know it was bad what they did. I know because I've had things happen to me. I can't, even, I can't even tell you. You know, people say, I love your anointing. I love your walk. I love your relationship with God. Can, can you pray for me to have that? I, sometimes I say to people, I've been through things in my journey that I wouldn't necessarily wish on an enemy, never mind a friend. So don't ask me. Get your own grace. Find your own walk. You want what I had? What I have? What I'm doing? What I'm carrying? You'd have to pay the price for this. And I dare say, it's too hard. It's too expensive. I had pastors say to me, uh, in the city of Nairobi and other places, said, Prophet, the things that were thrown at you, the things that you walked through, we, we would have died. We would be dead. We wouldn't be standing. But how strong you are to still be moving and going. I said, yeah, of course, by the grace of God. But I've made a decision, so I have the tenacity and the perseverance that I'll never quit and nobody, I'm invincible. Nobody can whip me. Nobody can beat me. You understand that? God gives you that resolve, but then along the way, there's things that came at you like arrows, you know? The the Bible talks about the, the arrows of the wicked. Quenching all the fiery darts. Those are the arrows of the wicked. Quenching them. By what? By the Holy Ghost. By the armor of God. By the power of Him surrounding your world. And taking all these things out of you. So I want to continue about, I want to finish this thing about what, what, what the Lord said about a grudge. You know, a grudge is like a, is a very child, it's, 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 like, it's, it's like immature in a way to hold it. You have to look at someone and say, you know, even if I don't like somebody. Let's be honest, nobody likes everybody. And I wonder sometimes, I'll, I'll tell a joke here, it's not really a joke, but I'll say it in a cheeky way. That I don't even know if God likes everybody. He has to love everybody because he, the human race was his thought, his deal, his creation. 
Where it went to in the realms of evil because of the devil and the sin of mankind is bad. However, <laughs> however, <laughs> hallelujah. However, hallelujah, uh, he likes certain people because they're likable to his purpose, you know. All things will work together for good. This is a promise to someone, not to everybody. All things will work together. For, it's conditional. All things will work together for good. Romans 8.28 said, to those who love God, and then he loves us back. He loved us first, but then we love him too. And he says, ah, you love me? Yes, Lord, I love you. Jesus said to Peter, do you love me, Peter? Peter said, you know I do. The Lord didn't say, oh, yeah, I know, it's okay. He said, uh, <laughs> he said, Peter, do you love me? Peter was like, Lord, you keep asking me the same question, man. Do you, do you think I don't? Thou knowest. Thou, you know, you tell me, do, I, do you think I love you? Let's clear this up right here. Ezekiel 37. The Lord said to Ezekiel, the prophet, can these, can these dead things here live again? Ezekiel said, I don't know, you know. It's hard for me to figure that out. But you know everything, so I'll leave it to you to answer this. But then in Habakkuk 2.1, said, I'll stand upon my watch to see what I'll say to him when he comes to question me. And then I got to write the vision down and make it plain that others can read it and then run with it. That's a how-to. You want a vision to come to pass in your life? Make it clear. For the past month or so, over day after day after day, we've been, we've been getting by the Spirit of the Lord. Many voices from around the world have been calling, and we've been documenting the conversations and saying, you know, this thing is going into a business plan of what we're doing. You ever been in the need of strategy? And then God begins to pour it out upon you. It's happening to me. It's happening. It's happening. It's been happening. You can't say God didn't spoke or show you anything. Then the thing now is to, to get into implementing it. But you have to free yourself from everything. The clutter around you. Your environment will either pollute you or promote you. Depending on what it is. If it's good, it's going to be good. If it's not, you have to adjust things if you want to get moving. What's blocking you or hindering you or blessing you and promoting you? You have to look at that and say, now, I have to have the thing that helps me go. If I feel disturbed and frustrated and grieved about a situation, particular people, situations, whatever, I have, I have the responsibility as the leader of the command and the charge of heaven here for, for the purpose of God on the earth to be fulfilled through me. I, I, I'm responsible to get that done. Nobody else. It's me, it's me, it's me, oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. It's me, it's me, it's me, it's me, oh Lord, standing in the way of needing to get fixed that I can then fix the world. Even the scripture says when, you are, when you're obedient, then you can revenge all disobedience. So if you're disobedient, you're not even obedient to the heavenly vision. and You're not moving along according to the plan of action that God has for you to be doing. Then how on earth are you going to uh, fix the world? I said it. We need to mind the things of others, but God also needs to help us mind the things of our own vineyard that we can dress it up and, and then we can present things to the world. And that, that's a process that God is having us to embark upon. So these things of negativity, cynicism, prejudice, hatred, bitterness, grudges, dislike, distaste, disgust, all of that, you have to get free from that. And the joy of the Lord is our strength. Nehemiah 8.10 said, happy are the servants of Solomon and the queen of Sheba couldn't even handle it and she fell out when she saw them. That's the way God wants our life. I talk a, a bit about that in my book, The Benefits of Excellence and the Laws of Success uh, also. Where is that? Ayama Shaka. This is, this is coming in, being made into an expanded edition. And this is going to be reprinted as is. Uh, we sold out of these, okay? And the book in, a, in serious hard copy right now is Prophetic Keys to Successful Living. I, and then, of course, we're going to redo the Office of the Prophet book, which is really brilliant, and others. We, I, I, I want to bring this to, a, to a, a, a pause here, and we'll pick this up in another session. But 
I want to pray right now, Father, by the Holy Ghost, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, Nazareth, the Son of the living God, begin to deliver your people from all hurt, fear, bitterness, rejection, grudges, negativity, cynicism, bitterness, hatred, all of these things that damage the soul and get into the psyche of a person and begin to wound their heart and they can't begin to see the way forward because they get stuck because of all these negative things. I feel like there's another realm of expression prophetically. I want to bring this out in another session in some different ways. But the Lord is really working on this with, the, with, his, with his leaders right now and his people. There's no place for the bitter water and the sweet water to flow. Remember that verse that James said. The bitter water and the sweet water can't flow from the same fountainhead. So the fountainhead needs to be clean. The pipes need to be clean. The purity of the vessel needs to be there. And the more transparent and glorious and fixed and healthy, and the, more, the more positive things are in and through a person, the more God can move death to self is still a thing deny yourself take up your cross and follow me greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world the same spirit that rose Christ from the dead dwells in me I have the mind of Christ I have the life of God in me and it subdues subverts divert, diverts destroys Every other negative, evil thing that the devil tried to do in my world. Can you say a big amen? We're free. This is deliverance. That God would destroy every stronghold. Every evil thing that's come against the movement of the day and hour that's at hand. Your, your vessel needs to be free. You know, and this. What I was saying Sunday, that I'm continuing now, now today, I was saying and seeing on Sunday morning that the Lord is doing a replacement thing with us. Like the negative things that happen can be replaced with positive great things. And now the blessing overtakes the adversity. And now revenge is your, your success is your best revenge, your success is what wreaks havoc uh, on the forces of darkness, you know? And your, your sorrow gets turned into joy. Your nighttime gets turned into daytime. Your morning gets turned into dancing. Come on, say amen. Your, your sadness and depression and despair gets turned into rejoicing and joy and power and li uh, lifting up. You, you need to see this in your life in manifestation. And it's Almighty God that is making sure that we get free from everything negative, every adverse situation and scenario. Victorious warfare will destroy every evil stronghold. Even the tough ones, it seem like this thing called in the scripture, the root of bitterness that defiles you and defiles whatever. The, le the leaven, that lump, lump of leaven that leavens the whole lump. That, that one thing that becomes bitter water in the, in the, in, in, in the, in, in the sweet, in the sweet water. It, it, it messes it up. You know, you can have 99% pure water. You can have 99.5% pure water, but you can have 0.05 poison. And now the water becomes undrinkable because the poison overrules the good. You could have a lot of good, but some that's bad, and it's still blocking your flow. And God, in this day and hour, I'm telling you prophetically, I'm God's prophet, I'm his servant. I'm telling you this by the Holy Ghost. He is addressing these things in everyone's lives to get you free and out of this thing. Some people would say, I'm okay, I'm okay. Yeah, but there's something in you that needs to be cleansed. There's still something that you need deliverance from. I'm telling you. Everybody needs this in one way or another. 
If you live in this evil world and if you're truly anointed and some adversity has come your way because of the attack against you, it's affected you in a bad way somehow. And I'm telling you right now, thus saith the Lord, in preparation for this next season, God is reaching down inside of us and ripping out everything that's bad and replacing it with something that is good. I'll continue this. You can tithe, sow, and offer, and sow seed. Everybody sow a seed right now to this anointing. The ways to do it are on the heading of the title of the message. All the links are there. Become my partner. And uh, if you get to see me, I'll be glad to sow this great book into your life as my gift of appreciation for your generous seed. Call me, write me, direct messenger, send a direct message through messenger or through WhatsApp. The numbers are on the screen. Everything is there. And the Lord is, uh, is, is really wanting me to pray over people for their success, especially business people, other leaders and all that. In a connect- and let me tell you something prophetic. God's going to raise up a network of ministries and businesses with me. Not just these people outside. You go there, they're strangers. You, you think they're going to... I've had these experiences. You think they're going to be a friend. You, you're working it out there. You're sowing seed. And still, God will reward us for blessing people. But yet, uh, you know, the, the, some people are interested in a transaction, not in a relationship. And I, think, I say, fooey on that, you know. It's not right. But again, whatever you are or whatever you have that's not good or whatever thing you, you, you might, someone might flow in that's adverse to the, the greatness of God, you know, in the fullness of reality as far as brotherhood, camaraderie, relationship, friendship, networking, you know, mutual beneficial things and all that. The more people that don't want to do that, so what? They're on the outside. But it's not going to affect us or our progress. In fact, really, the enemy always overplays his hand. And the sin nature of man always overplays the hand. Because what it does is it pushes us to do more for the vision and the calling that God's given us. And that's where I'm at. And I'm telling you, we are going to see networks of people from around the planet Earth joining up with us right now. We're going to build that. It's going to be astounding. And it's going to be above and beyond what even I asked or thought, or anybody asked or thought. But that's, that's what's happening right now. Father, we thank you for this. It's just like I, I'm seeing it so strongly. The network across the nations, networks of nations. Pambo, la salache, la soto, in excellence in exquisite reality. Bambro shalavar and tele soko la shala, zata la shala te. It's almost like the acronym in them could be N-O-N-E, which is none, but I can't say that because it's not one, it's one. It's, it's not even one, it's, multipl- it's multiplied many. So that's a f- funny thing, but networks uh, across nations, networks of nations. We're gonna begin to see Many people, Father, I thank you for bringing them to us from the north, south, east, and the west, us to them and them to us, through the media, through the internet, through connections, through interpersonal relationships, through new friends. And really, this time, uh, the, the latter house is going to be greater than the former house. Things we've seen and things you've used us to do so miraculously and so mightily across the nations is little compared to what's coming next. The big, great season is upon us now, and God... Is cleaning house. Can you say amen? If you want to walk in anything great, you're going to see the Spirit of God come to destroy every stronghold that's tried to attach itself to you and block your way. And now you're free. Now it's like, it's like whatever they did, it doesn't matter. Whoever did what, it doesn't matter. If you lost money, you'll get it back. If you lost an opportunity, you lost time. God will help to redeem the time. The days the the locusts have eaten, God will restore back. The mighty men will rise up to join your army now. Maybe things came to knock it down before, the things you were building. But the Lord says now, you're going to begin to rise. You're going to begin to shine. You're going to begin to walk into glory. You're You're going to succeed 
and you're going to prosper. Can you say amen? And everything the enemy tried to do to try to thwart you, stop you, crush you, block you, deny you, deject you, dissuade you, deceive you, dissatisfy you, disgust you, dement you, torment you, put you down, put you out of the way, is being overturned and broken right now. The Holy Ghost is breaking every spiritual stronghold that's come against us in Jesus' name. Every word that's been spoken against us, we send it back to the sender. It won't affect us. We're not the consumer of evil. We're not the consumer of, the, of evil goods. We're not the consumer of any of that. We're the partaker of the divine nature of Christ Jesus. And we have the victory. Can you say a big amen? God is good. His mercy endures forever. For the Lord, he is good. And his mercy endures forever. And his mercy is upon us. It's upon you and it's upon me. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Father, for the powerful movements of heaven that's about to go across the nations of the world. And every evil bonded stronghold obstacle, whether it was in a vessel residing, whether it was in the air, whether it was in some object, whether it was in some words, whether it was in some strategy from evildoers or enemy, enemies or enemy, or the enemy, the ultimate enemy, that stupid prince of darkness, they call him, Lucifer, the biggest fool who ever lived, because he was brilliant then, but when he rebelled, he got cursed, and now he's Satan, and he's defeated forever. All of their nonsense cannot stop what we're doing. And Father, I also pray for healing, health, and strength for every person, that you'll heal them, you'll heal us completely, and have us walk in perfect strength and health, that we'll see many more decades even, many more productive years of the move of God around the world. Give us the strength and the energy for all of it. Anything that the enemy's done, take it out of us. Anything he's put in us, take it out of us. Anything he's stolen from us, take it out of us. Give it back. Seven times, times two. Double for your trouble. That's 14. And then Jesus said, as you're giving and as you're working with me in things, 30, 60, 100 fold. And even God said, I'll make you a thousand times more. I'll make a little one. Isaiah 16, 22 said, I'll make a little one like a thousand, and a small one like a strong nation, and I, the Lord, will hasten it in its time when we're ready. He's already ready. That's what that means. doesn't mean there's a timing for it. You know, people uh, horrifically botch and butcher that scripture, and I get very disturbed when I see that happening. You know, God has a time for everything, everything when the right time. He didn't say that. He said, I'll hasten it in its time. In other words, you're getting ready for it. The Lord says, I'm already ready. I'm waiting for you when you're ready to move. Now let's go together. But guess what? It could have happened before. God was there already. He wouldn't deny us and say, not the time. You know, there's something about God. I've never seen this. Where like you're ready for something. You know, someone could say you're not ready to handle certain things. That could be true because you're in the development process uh, of becoming. To be ready for the great things, that's true, that, that, that has validity. But I've never seen God when you're actually ready for something and he goes, still not time, wait some more. That's the deceiver like a Laban to uh, Jacob. Eh? Oh, wait, work another one, you know, I, you have to wait more. God never tells anybody to wait more. I've never had him say it to me. I've never seen any example where he's legitimately done that. Unless like, He'll, 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 he'll still have you in the process of development to get ready for something. Yeah, that, that has its validity. That has its place. But my God, when you're already ready and ready to move, when the Lord says, I want to bring you this, I shout back, bring it now. Let's figure it out along the way. Bring it now. I don't want to wait. What's to wait for? He'll give us the grace to help. He'll give us the help too. God's vision speaks to a man. The dream of God for a person comes to him through the instruction and the unveiling of the vision, but the man himself can never fulfill the vision by himself. 
We're the, I'm the leader of this thing. You're the leader of your thing. Maybe, what a, you know, if you're a leader in something. Or if you're a leader next to me, we're leading something in this work of dominion. Amen. That's touching and affecting the lives of millions of people around the world. Well, we have to rise up, but there's, there's advancement that God wants to do. So he's cleaning house. Everything adverse that's been in us is coming out of us. And anything we need to come through people, resources and things is coming to us that we can arise and build. Can you say amen? Nehemiah 2, 17 to 20. Let's put that on the screen as we're closing here. We will arise and build. The God of heaven himself will prosper us. And we will arise and build. Take a second to read this right now. These devils came against Nehemiah told him, you'll have no part in this, but the God of heaven himself will prosper us and we will arise and build. You can't stop us. God wants to make sure we're invincible, only promotable, never demotable, not stoppable, invincible, never to be diverted from the calling. Like it says in uh, 2 Peter I love this scripture in 2 Peter 1.10. Let's look at that. If you make your calling and election sure, you'll never stumble and fall. You could trip along the way for a second, but you'll keep right on moving. Nothing shall by any means hurt you. You'll tread upon serpents and scorpions, Luke 10.19 said, and crush them under your feet, and nothing shall by any means harm you because of the power of God that's with us. Can you say amen? We have the victory. Every stronghold is being destroyed. And all these things that try to afflict your soul, God is ripping them out right now in this day and hour. So we can go forward in great power in Jesus' name. Thank you for being my partner. As you're sowing a great seed, find me, how I can get you this book, or I can send it to you by digital copy. And some of the other books, The Laws of Success and the Benefits of Excellence are also going to be available in digital format that wherever you are in the world, as you're sowing seed into this grace. These are only for partners now. I mean, if you want to buy the book and find a place where it's for sale, go pay the price and get it. But I'm much more interested in you sowing a seed into this grace, a generous one, to work with uh, what we're doing and to help and being a support structure and friend to the, to the ministry. And then I'm going to sow this as my gift. So there's no sale, no transaction. You're sowing, I'm sowing. We're sowing. You see, it's a beautiful thing. So the Lord bless you. Keep you, make his face. The Lord bless you and keep you and make his face to shine upon you and give you his peace, but also give you his power and his prosperity. And let's remember the words of the Psalmist David in Psalm 35, 27, the Lord takes pleasure in the prosperity of his servant. That's me. If you're a servant, that's you. Be blessed in Jesus' name. I'm Thomas Manton IV, and we'll talk to you on the next one. Love you much. I'm praying for you in Jesus' name. Dear brethren, in Psalms 119, 105, the Bible says, Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. Truly, God has sent Prophet Dr. Thomas Manton IV to proclaim and declare his word of abundance and prosperity prophetically unto the nations. Thus, brothers and sisters in Christ, I urge you, just as the Bible says in Matthew 10, 41, whoever welcomes a prophet as a prophet will receive a prophet reward. Let us welcome and embrace the prophet of God by supporting his ministry. You can sow a seed, you can send your love offering. You can support or partner in the ministry program using the details displayed on your screen. For when the prophet of God decrees a blessing upon you, indeed, you shall be blessed. <laughs>